Hello, this is part two of the add-on development tutorials that I'm making. This video will cover some of the more advanced topics of add-on development and how to make add-ons in a more sustainable way. We will be making a new add-on from the previous video, and this is the problem I want to solve. When separating a mesh that has been instanced, it separates it from the current mesh you're on, but it is now missing on all the other instances. I would like the add-on to be able to add that new object back to all the other instances. Let's get started. With a multi-file add-on, along with the license headers in each file, you also want a license file. In this case, thankfully, you can find examples of these online. For us, we're just using a standard GPL license. Since we're extending the separate operation, we are going to make a new operator class. Now I'm going to put this in a separate file for organization. The main function within the operator that executes the operation is within the execute function. It takes the Blender context as a parameter. I will need to register the class in this case. So I added it to the classes list that I have and have it register and unregister the class respectively for each function. Since this operator requires a shortcut, we need to learn how to make a key config and key map. The key here is that the name and the space type need to match the existing shortcut to successfully override it. In this case, I accidentally got the wrong space type. Thankfully, with the Blender terminal, I was able to troubleshoot and see what the original space type is, which in this case is empty. Now when I press P, it doesn't do anything, but in the system console you can see that it's running the custom operator. For the reload scripts operator to support multiple files, we need to tell Blender which modules to reload and in what order. In this case, we only need the operator module at this point. If this init.py file has already been reloaded, then tell it to also reload the operator module as well. I could use sysmodules and give the full add-on module path when reloading, but in this case for convenience I'm just using locals. Alright, let's start building up the operator. Now since I'm using BPY ops directly, something you have to keep in mind is that operators have specific contexts and usually rely on object selection. Unfortunately this operator is written in C, so there's no Python code that I can rip directly from, so I'm going to have to work with this myself. In the Blender terminal I test creating arrays to determine the list of all objects that are of the same instance, meaning all objects that have the same data. This is one of my favorite ways of using the Blender terminal, is to just do quick tests and be able to see if the data is being accessed correctly. Now that I've created that list, now it's just plugging in the correct variables. In this case, I'm replacing object references with the active object, which is the object we are separating from. With selection, there's only one new object that's created. With by material or by loose parts, there can be more than one, which I have not gotten to yet, and I'll troubleshoot that eventually. So in this loop, in which case with the cube as an example, with each cube, we want to get its matrix or position and take the separated face and place a new linked separated face at each of these other cube positions. Here I use the temp override function in the context, which just allows me to, for the BPY ops functions, I can override parameters linked to the context. For example, which objects are selected. And then I assign the new object, the transform. Oh, and it looks like the context is incorrect because when we duplicate, we're usually in object mode. And in the operator, we're in edit mode. So I need to toggle back and forth. And now the position is off. So it looks like the selection isn't changing the way I'm expecting it to be. So I'm going to do some debugging. Instead of referring to the object we duplicated from, I have it only refer to the new object. And now it looks like it works. 
since we want to be able to separate not only by selection but also by material and loose parts like the original operator we are going to add a property to the operator in this case we'll use an enum property since you can only since it's deciding between multiple options in this case i'm just copying the original values i went to the blender source code to learn the keywords that way i can pass them along to the bpy.ops mesh separate call that is in my execute function. I'm going to test the by loose parts. And it separated them, but one of the eyes in the wrong position. Since multiple pieces can be separated, now I have to clean up the code to anticipate multiple objects being the new objects. So I have the iterator also iterate over every new piece that needs to be instanced. Oh, and the context is incorrect again because select all is in object mode, so I just need to toggle back and forth. Make sure it's in the right place, and it looks like it works. This build script is already pre-made for my other add-ons. It'll be linked in the description. For if you're just hosting your full add-on on GitHub and there's not any extra tests or things like that, you probably won't need something like this. But I found it really nice to be able to ensure that users only have the files they need and nothing else. They don't need, have any test files or anything like that. In this case, for some reason, the operator module is confusing Python. It looks like it was a renaming clash, and so I just changed the operator module to be separate operator. And it built just fine. And finally, we have unit testing. This setup is in Light Painter and will also be in the final repository for this, linked in the description. I found testing, testing has been something I've wanted for Blender for a long time, and I've tested various things along with Enview, my paid add-on, and it was always just such a pain to set up. In this case, I found something that is both simple to set up, it's native to Blender, and native to how PyTest works. The Blender module is on PyPy, which means you can have it in your virtual environment. All this does is run Blender within a Python session, which means you can run and operate Blender as if it was opened up. And so all that my code does is ensures that the add-on is installed. It takes a zip file, which does mean you need to use the zip script that we just made. So it'll grab that script and it will install that as an add-on and then run the tests in the Blender session. I also added a quick environment variable so that way if you wanted to clear the add-on installation after running the tests, it'll clear it for you so you have a clean slate for next time. Now at this point, it's really just building the unit tests. My example has fixtures for the context and ops, just for convenient access. And from here, I'm really just using the Blender terminal to copy operation commands and using that to reflect what I would do in the UI to test. And then I'm using simple assert statements to ensure that the number of objects separating are correct, that it's a linked duplicate, and so on. And that is the end of this two-part course for developing add-ons. I hope you enjoyed it. It is much more high level. I didn't want to get into the aspects that are more of just how to code. I just wanted to help people dip their toes into the actual making of the add-ons and making add-ons in a sustainable way, especially if you want to sell them or make gigantic add-ons of lots of different panels and operations. But thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.